Hey everybody, rocking with the Rock Dog. Today we're outside Paris, Missouri at the Union Covered Bridge. This is a state historical site, and I'm thinking there's only about three of these in the state. This is a real nice one. They got her all fixed up. We'll take a walk through her and take a little walk on the little water crossing down there and see what that's like too. But this is a really nice, well-preserved bridge. They did some work on it a couple years ago. Let's look at the abutments to it because these guys deserve to be recognized for the rock work. Still in really good shape. All right, let's get on back up here and see what's going on. Got some real nice wood beams and trusses in here. I think they put a new couple new ones in three or four years ago. And Pretty nice, huh? Take a peek out the ventilation windows. This is a great spot to bring your kids. There's always shade here. There's always a little water running over the road. A lot of frogs, crawdads, little fish over in them rocks. They can chase around. Probably only about three or four feet deep under here right now. However, it will get almost to the bottom of this bridge on certain days. Don't drive through the water that day. We like these spots like this around here because that's a great place to clean off the underside of your pickup truck. Drive through there three or four times about 15 mile an hour and it'll be spotless. And all the hickory nuts are falling off. That's a little early. They must be feeling some stress. All right, we'll give you a few seconds to look at these here. Let's tell you how to build a bridge if you want one. And a bunch of other. We have the Burr Arch Truss. Says when Theodore Burr combined an arch and a series of king posts, he developed a bridge truss that could be made much longer than any of the earlier truss designs and yet could still maintain the necessary strength. There's your remaining bridges in Missouri. Uh, I have a video on this one. Oddly enough, that creek has no water under it. I walked across the bridge mushroom hunting and then kind of stumbled back and got on the other side of it and looked up and seen I was on the other side of the bridge and I had no idea what was going on for a second when I didn't cross any water to do that. But Somebody told me about 10 years or so before that, maybe 15, that uh, they had a huge flood and it got cut off and now it's not got any water under it which is strange because there is a little bridge that there is water under it i would think they would just move that bridge to that spot and it would be a real bridge again and that's not very far from here the locust creek bridge it's down uh highway 36 past macon probably 30 miles I'm thinking all right let's take a walk down here and see what's going on in the creek because I got my rubber boots on I can get out there Be about 95 this afternoon. 
and tomorrow. But like I said, bring your kids here in the inner tube or a little floaty deal and they can have a time of their life. I'm sure you could catch some small little catfish up underneath there and some bluegills and stuff, especially on corks. See, there's a few minnows out there. Let's walk back there and see if we move a rock around for any crawdads or anything or here. A lot of our creeks don't have, there's a big one right there, see? That's cool, cool, there's a crawdad here, that means the creek is healthy. That's a pretty big one too. Which if they're over here, they're really over here in this oxygenated water, I bet. Be careful walking on that, you'll bust your ass. And as most of you know from watching my video, I was, I'm a big relic hunter. And if you like looking for relics, here's your spot. Just come out with a snake. Got that little catfish come out, didn't he? Look. Uh, this is a great spot to look for relics. So they just fly over here and get caught in these rocks. Come out here and move some rocks around. Pile up a little pile for some crawdads to hide out in. And maybe you'll find your arrowhead. Let's, uh, here goes another crawdad. Let's get this uh, catfish come out from underneath this rock. Oh, you just hit my foot. Alright, let's see the snakes come out from underneath this rock. I don't want to be too close because you'll hit my foot and come up and go right inside my boot. See? That would be horribly bad. Of course, I'd let you see it because I get like lots of views on that. Water's warm right here too. It feels like it's about yeah, 75 or 80 degrees. There's a big snake right there with that one. These are just water snakes. They're not going to hurt you, but um, that's a pretty good size one right there. I would imagine there's 10 or 15 of those in this spot right here. This has got grass. It's just because there's so much uh, movement of the water. Because uh, it gets stagnant up in the rivers a lot of times this time of summer, so all the life just naturally comes to a spot like this. I mean, don't hurt them guys. They're, they're not, they're not poisonous or anything. You won't find a poisonous snake in the water in Missouri. We have copperheads. I don't think they've killed anybody since 1903 when a little two or three year old kid died. But um, rattlesnakes don't like water. Copperheads don't like water. They like hunting mice and stuff. So whatever you see here isn't going to bother you. But right here would be the spot to look for um relics and stuff and remember in missouri if you enter any creek river or stream since 1953 we have a ruling called elder and del Clure that allows you to enter that now you can't if this is a private farmer's land you can't park over there and walk through the woods but you can always walk back to any roadway or public access spot and get to that creek river or stream that way and you're perfectly okay there and if you have to walk around an obstruction like that with your kayaks there's provisions in the ruling to go around that tree if it's blocking your path and to eat on a sandbar and camp out there for a couple hours and rest and uh, things like that you can fish if you're licensed in Missouri you can always fish in any creek stream or river that you enter legally because you have been licensed by the state to duly take those fish and all fish in a creek stream and river belong to the people of the state of Missouri so that's how you can fish and they're also paid for with excise taxes from every time you buy something from even Walmart or anything there's about a 30% tax on that already before it hits the shelf then when you include your sales tax you're up to about 40 cents for all your fishing gear so that's why you get to go everywhere you're paying a lot Colorado is starting to open up some of their rivers finally to the public after they um, realized that they were used for the fur trade thus becoming a highway and a common mode of transportation that way. But in Missouri, it was for a different reason. Something like that, y'all. I'm gonna pick that up. It could be an arrowhead. Nope. Different color. Came down the creek last flood. See, there's nothing that's changed color out there. Something over there, we'll go look at that. It's nothing, but it's a white rock. Like you can see, it's just different than everything else. 
lots of hammer stones and things like that out in a place like this for sure, for sure. Oh, right here's the spot. All right, everybody, we are at the Union Covered Bridge near Paris, Missouri. Nice little creek for your kids to play in. Shade, wildlife, Indian relics probably. Probably some fishing lures people lost down here. Come on down here and get them and enjoy your time in Missouri. Rock dog out.